gifts as well. So I do, I, I want to ask you, if you don't mind this morning, in this last week, you have felt the Holy Spirit in a different way, in a, in a greater way. You felt him do something, uh, lead or speak or empower, or you were aware of his presence with you um, in, a, in, in, a, in a greater way or in a special way this week. If, if you say yes, would you mind raising your hand just as an encouragement to us this morning? Ra look around, look around. Raise it high and wave it because that encourages us. Okay, so Julia, Crystal, Jocelyn, uh, what is her name? Claire. <laughs> I do know Claire very well. Maui, Lisa, amen, amen. So I want to encourage you, you have... The Holy Spirit wants to do more. These, what he did this week is, is wonderful, and it's the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit wants to do more. If you say, I raised my hand, but I didn't yet feel something more or greater, do not stop. Do not stop. Uh, I trust, I trust God. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about this later, but we're going to keep on talking about this. My desire for you as your pastor is to the best of my imperfect knowledge and imperfect prayers is what I believe God's desire for you is. And that is a greater work of the Holy Spirit in your lives, a greater measure of the Holy Spirit in your lives. If you, the Holy Spirit is is your seek is your not so secret weapon the holy spirit is your not so secret power the holy spirit is your not so secret partner some of you this morning are coming to church and i'm so glad you are and you're interested or maybe you're not so interested but a friend brought you this morning and you're looking at the Christian life and you're looking at other people and you, you're hearing messages and you think, how can I live like that? I can't live. I can't live like that. That's too hard. Who can live that way? Well, you are right. No one, no person can live that way. But when you become a Christian and when you begin a relationship with God, and you invite him to come into your life, God himself, God the Holy Spirit, not just at church on Sunday mornings, but every day, every hour, every situation, morning, noon, night, all the time, comes to make his home in you and empower you and equip you to live the life that is pleasing to God. Who wouldn't want, who wouldn't want partnering with the Holy Spirit in our lives? We want that, don't we? He's our only hope. He's our only hope. He's going to get us through here, and he's going to get us to heaven. So we're going to continue this morning. So as your pastor, just... I, have, I don't have many secrets. You know, usually when I, I'll say, this is what I'm praying for, I, I'll tell you, this is no secret, okay? My, I have, as your pastor, I have two tools in my pocket. I, I have a few others, but my two tools are prayer and preaching. That's it, Re really. Now, there's my testimony, but that's, that's part of it. But as your pastor, prayer and preaching and to the best of my knowledge, as an imperfect Christian, as I have told you, I believe that God's plan is for us, each one of us, a greater work of the Holy Spirit. Whether you already say, yes, I've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, or whether that is not yet your experience. This is God's plan so, and God's purpose. So what do I do? Because I want to partner with God. I don't want my own agenda for you. I don't want to tell you, now this is what we're going to do. God forbid um, that I make church about what I want and about me. 
church must be about what God wants in us. And so my tools are preaching and prayer. So I want you to know, if you raised your hand last week, and even if you didn't, but especially if you raised your hand last week, I was praying for you every single day, multiple times a day, and I'm not going to stop. And this is what I'm preaching because this is God's plan and God's purpose for us. Amen? Amen. 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 So last week we looked at uh, several different groups. Our, our question this week is, have you received since you believed? And some of you don't like that, maybe. I hope you don't mind it. But this is a question from God's word. And we're going to get to that this morning. So this morning, let's just a reminder. Here's the really quick revision, as we say. We've looked at Pentecost. And we look at here, we, last week we looked at these four situations of God and Jesus. So the promises from God. And then Jesus says, I will ask the Father and he will send. But in the Gospels, we also read that John said, Jesus is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And that should reassure all of us because we know Jesus, right? We love Jesus. We know his character. We know his work. Uh, we know his nature. We know his love. So Jesus is the one that's going to do this in our lives. So Pentecost happens 2,000 plus years ago. This was the first one. So just a quick reminder, by this point, you should almost have this memorized, right? The day of Pentecost had arrived. They were together in one place. They had been waiting on God. They had been meeting together. They were earnest in seeking the Lord. They were praying. Uh, they were in harmony in unity. Jesus had said he was going to do something. And then Jesus had said, but you wait. So not only were they looking for God, for Jesus to do something, but they were also being obedient in their lives. So if you want more of the Holy Spirit in your life, for sure, one of, our, one of your steps is to be obedient to God. Just be obeying what God shows you in his word. That's what you do. Just obey and look to him and, and we're praying. And so they were obeying, they were praying, they were together. I, the Bible doesn't tell us... Um, a lot, but it says enough for us to know that they were really earnestly seeking the Lord, right? I mean, they weren't messing around. They weren't casual about it. They weren't careless about it. They were not complacent. And I think these three, these three things, being careless, being casual, and being complacent, maybe that'll be a message one day in the future. These are three enemies, enemies to the further work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, right? When we're casual, when we're careless, when we're complacent. And they were none of those things. And so the day of Pentecost, so this was God's timing. Suddenly, it sounds like rushing wind. Uh, we got some of that during the typhoon these last couple days, right? It fills the house where they were staying. These tongues that looked like fire, um, we don't know that it was fire, but it looked like fly, fire, right? Like flames of fire. They appeared, rested on each one of them. And then verse four, then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different languages or your Bible translation may say began to speak in other tongues. Uh, what were those tongues? We don't know exactly, but we know some of them because the Bible tells us a few verses later, right? So when the Holy Spirit comes, the languages that he gives you may be earthly languages. It may be languages that are spoken now. It may be languages that were spoken at one time but are not now. Or it may be the languages of angels. That's what the Bible says. It may be any one of these things. Um, and so they began to speak in different languages as the Spirit gave them ability for speech. You do not have to produce anything. Holy Spirit does that. You provide yourself. Yeah? Does that make sense? You don't have to produce. Don't get under pressure. I, got, got, I, I, I have to say something. I have to... I have to mm, uh. The Spirit gave them this ability. That should take the pressure off of you. Okay? that takes the pressure off as the Spirit gave them this ability. 
So I want to say something before we go on. This is still part of the revision with added parts, right? Look at this event. Up to this point, who was waiting on... Who was waiting for whom? They were waiting for Jesus, right? Yes or no? Yes. They were waiting for Jesus. Jesus had promised, I will ask the Father, we will send uh, the gift, the promise is coming, and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and with power, all of this. They were waiting for God. May I say something to you this morning? I want to encourage you and I want to challenge you. We are no longer at this place. If you are praying for more of the Holy Spirit, you are not waiting on God anymore. Listen, God is waiting on you. God is waiting on you. Well, yeah, but I've asked him. Well, keep asking. Well, yeah, but I've prayed. Keep praying. Yeah, but I'm waiting. Well, you keep, you keep digging in. You keep digging in. The promise of the Holy Spirit has come. And we are no longer, brothers and sisters, we're no longer waiting on God. And I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad or burdened. We're no longer waiting on God. God is waiting on us. But maybe we are careless. Maybe we are complacent. Uh, maybe we are too casual. God's waiting on us now. So we're not here anymore, are we? But here's this gift of the Father. Do you agree with that? Does that make sense to you? Sometimes I talk with people, well, if God wants, if God wants to give me this gift, he can. Are you serious? That is nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere. You search, you tell me if you find it, and I'll change my message. I'll apologize next week. It's not in the Bible. God's waiting on you. And God's not angrily waiting on you. God is not impatiently waiting on you. God is lovingly and yearningly waiting on you, brothers and sisters, because he has the gift of the Holy Spirit for you, which, who will revolutionize your life, who will transform your life. This is what God wants for you. This is the promise of the Father. Then, time passes. We don't know how long, so that was at Pentecost. There we go. And then at Samaria, a short time later. We don't really know. It may be one to three years later. Persecution breaks out. Philip goes up to Samaria, and then what happens in Samaria? In Samaria, what do we see? Samaria, they had welcomed God's message. They received Jesus. They send Peter and John. Peter and John arrive, and they see they have not yet been baptized with the Holy Spirit. This is God's promise. This is God's promise, not just for these really righteous Jews, but for these people from Samaritan that the Jews had looked down on. And they come, and what do they do? There's, they immediately pray. What do they see? They see, brothers and sisters, the need is for the baptism with the Holy Spirit. The need is for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. When you're reading your Bible, you will see with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you'll see in the Holy Spirit. It's translated both ways, okay? It's all, it, but it's, it's the same, with and in the Holy Spirit. So what happens again? They pray that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Don't have to work for it. Don't have to measure up in some way. Don't have to get good enough. What do you do when you receive? Yes, Lord. And you put out your hands spiritually and you receive the gift from heaven, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers. Why did they do that? Nobody laid hands on them. I don't know. But I think it's a point of faith. Okay, and what happens? And they received the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit. So that's a short time later. And it happens again in the same way, in the same way. Okay, next, what happens? This is still the, this is our revision with extra. Saul in Damascus, sometime later. I love this one. You know why? This one gives you hope. Because some of you this morning think you are too bad for the Holy Spirit. Some of you think God's not going to baptize me with the Holy Spirit until I get better. 
my life is kind of messed up. I've got to clean up a little bit before, the whole, before God will give me the Holy Spirit. Guess what the Bible says? John said, but when Jesus comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with what? What's the word? Oh, y'all don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. What with? With fire. What does fire do? Well, if it doesn't burn you up, it purifies you, <laughs> okay? And the fire of the Holy Spirit will burn up what needs to get burned up, but it will purify you. So you don't have to get good enough, and you don't have to clean up your life enough, but you can't be casual, you can't be complacent, and you can't be careless. Be sincere about it. And he will baptize you with, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. These things that you've been battling, these carnal fleshly things that you've been struggling with you think you can overcome that you think you can defeat that you can't do anything about that the holy spirit has to do that and that's one of the reasons the holy spirit comes and so we look at this so saul is the next one he has met jesus on the road to damascus and then god then an angel says ananias go find saul go pray for him no no lord because he's a murderer of Christians. He's a murderer of Christians. And, he, and God says, no, nope, go, because he's praying. So Ananias is obedient. We only see Ananias this one time. Never see him again. Sorry, I know I'm kind of, my, my thing is, I'll do the best I can. Hang on. Let's see if that helps. Um, I, I, this really encourages me, because we don't know who Ananias is, except he's really a devout believer. And God sends him, and he prays, and he says, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me to you so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he prays for him. And Paul, Saul slash Paul is filled with the Holy Spirit. This is where I want to encourage you. Not three days early, earlier, not three days earlier, Saul had murder in his heart. Not only that, Saul had blood on his hands. Saul had the blood of Christians on his hands. It was very clear because that was his own testimony. He had the blood of Christians on his hand. And yet, here he is three days later, and God says, I want to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. So if you're struggling with guilt this morning, and you think, ah, let the Holy Spirit who baptizes you in fire, Jesus who baptizes you with the Holy Spirit in fire, he's going to take care of a lot of these things that you are struggling with right now. I want to tell you, if you don't let the Holy Spirit work on some of these things in your life, you will struggle forever, forever. Don't get discouraged by that. Instead, say, oh, yes, I want the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit. So that's Saul's testimony. And then we go a little bit further. And then Cornelius and the household in Caesarea. We've looked at that before. Again, revision. While Peter was still speaking the words, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who were listening. Sorry, I left out a word, right? All those listening to the message, who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers, they're astounded because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they heard them speaking in tongues or other languages and praising God. It glorifies God. The Holy Spirit always glorifies God. That's what he does. I want to encourage you with this because some of you think it has to be a special person who will pray for you before you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Uh, somebody special has to lay hands on me. And we see that sometimes in the Bible, but we don't see it all the time, do we? We see it sometimes, but we don't see it here. Don't, don't get your eyes on people. You keep your eyes on God. We keep our eyes on God. And they were immediately baptized with the Holy Spirit. And they also began speaking in other tongues and praising God, praising God. Now, let's move ahead. This is about eight years or so after Jesus had said, the Father and I, I'm going to go back to heaven, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. We've gotten this far. Now, let's transition. And I want us to you get in your time machine. We're going to move ahead 25 years. 
past Peter and John. They're still ministering there in Jerusalem. And now let's look at another two passages in the time that we have. If you've got your Bibles, you can turn to Acts 18 and Acts 19. And these two episodes are together. And there's a reason they're together. Ready? So we're still talking about the Holy Spirit. And here we have... Apollos in Ephesus. This is in Acts 18. Ready? So, uh, Christians are in Jerusalem. Holy Spirit's doing all sorts of wonderful things. Paul is on his missionary journey. Are you with me? Yeah? Uh-huh? Okay. Let's look at Apollos. I, 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 I prayed about including this one because... It's some things we don't know about this, but as I prayed for it, I felt like, nope, we got to include this one. So let's look at it together, and then let's try to understand it together using the wisdom that God has given us, okay? So the whole passage is Acts 18, uh, 24 through 26, and we'll start with, with, with it. So a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria. Uh, Alexandria was the second great city of Rome. Um, it was a it was a seat of great learning and great education. It had the at the t the largest uh, uh, library uh, uh, gathered think gathered uh, manuscripts in the world. And then later the the library burned. But it was a great city, and it had a huge Jewish population. So Apollos comes from there, uh, Alexandria in Alexandria in Egypt. Okay, so uh, a native of Alexandria. He came to Ephesus. Okay, now what's going on? Why, he came, why did he come to Ephesus? What's going on? Here's your background, okay? The background is this. Paul was traveling around preaching the gospel. And then he met a husband and wife team, Priscilla and Aquila. And they started ministering together. They became a traveling evangelistic team together. And they were ministering all together, which is kind of which is, which is of great, okay? So Paul, Priscilla, and Aquila, they were traveling together. And they were in Corinth. And then they decided, we're going to travel. Let me make sure. Uh, Eileen checks my math, by the way. You know she's in accounting. Eileen says my math isn't very good sometimes. I don't know why she says that. They're in Corinth, and they travel across to Ephesus. And Eileen, it is 402 kilometers by sea from, Cor <laughs> from Corinth to Ephesus. So they travel across the Aegean Sea. It takes about eight days. They arrive in Ephesus, and Paul keeps on going to other places, okay? Priscilla and Aquila stay in Ephesus and they start preaching the gospel. That's your background, okay? And then we meet Apollos. Look at what it says. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures, eloquent and powerful, okay? So what do we know about him? He was a learned man, so he's very, very, very highly educated. He's uh, not just a smart guy, he's an educated man, okay? Um, and it says, with a thorough knowledge of the scripture, so that means Old Testament. He knows the Old Testament very, very well, and he's also eloquent and powerful. So eloquent means uh, that he has a natural ability with, uh, with, uh, in speaking. Have you ever known somebody who's eloquent? I, all along, I'll meet people like that. I, I really do, because I, you know me, I, I love words. I really love words. And sometimes I will meet eloquent people, and I'll just sit and listen to them, and I'm just like, I, I, lo I really, I, I, re I love it. J in the same way that some of you might meet someone else and, and you might think, wow, they're so good at this or they're so good at that. So Apollos was really the way that he spoke. But not only that, he was really powerful in his speaking. Verse 25, this man had been instructed in the way of the Lord. So you know what the way of the Lord is? The way of Jesus, okay? It's the way of Jesus. He knows about Jesus. And being fervent in spirit, I like this. Do you know what this means? Fervent in spirit? It means that he was bubbling in his spirit. That's the literally. Have you ever met somebody that's bubbling in their spirit about something? You should kind of like that. When you're with them, that's what they want to talk about. So he's bubbling in his spirit as he talks about, as he's, as he's preaching and teaching about Jesus, okay? So he spoke and he taught the things about Jesus accurately. So he, this is a great guy. 
This is a, you would, you, who wouldn't want him as pastor of the church? But look at what, look at what it says next. Although he knew only John's baptism. Mm. So that tells us something about him. What was John's baptism? Water and a baptism of repentance, right? It would go, went so far. But he is teaching about Jesus accurately, right? And so if he's teaching about Jesus accurately, I think that means he was teaching about the, uh, the crucifixion, the resurrection. I think it must have meant he was teaching all of these things, but he only knows John's baptism. Now, Ha. Okay. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, and after Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him home and explained the way of God to him more accurately. What do you think Priscilla and Aquila taught him about? What do you think Priscilla and Aquila shared with him. What do you think they explained to a greater degree? I think if we use our brains and we use wisdom, we look at what the writer says, although he knew only John's baptism. What do you think they talked about. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the baptism of Jesus, which is with or in the Holy Spirit. Now I want us to see something here and I want to encourage you and not discourage you. I'm preaching kind of, I'm teaching kind of low key this morning, but I really want us to get this. If we look at Apollos, this man, he's a great man, right? He's a great preacher. He knows all about Jesus. He's bubbling over. He's really fervent. He's zealous. He's really educated. He's not pulling out weird things from the Bible and going this way and that way. He is, he's right up there. He's right up there. But when Priscilla and Aquila hear him, they realize there's something more there's something more. There's something needed. They don't embarrass him. They don't put him on the spot. They don't say, ha, huh, well, you haven't. No, no, God never does that. But what do they do? They take him into their home privately, privately. God doesn't put anybody on the spot. And they explained what? The way of God to him more accurately. Now, what are they explaining? What, let me tell you what I believe. Let me tell you what, as far as I can understand, as I've studied, this is what I think. He only knew John's bas baptism. Well, here's an easy one for us. Here's a no-brainer for us. Are you ready? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Here's John's, here's, here's John's uh, testimony. John said, John the Baptist, they knew John's baptism. Matthew, the first gospel, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But the one who's coming after me is more powerful than I. If you have been water baptized this morning, praise God. I'm so glad you've been water baptized. Probably most of you, I may, I may have water baptized you, or perhaps Pastor Renee did, or perhaps Dad did, or, or some others. And praise God. But the one who who comes after me and before me is so much greater than I am and he baptizes you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The Holy Spirit and fire. I believe that's the baptism. I believe that's what they spoke about when they took him into their home and said, Apollos, praise the Lord for how far you've come. Praise the Lord for what you're preaching. Uh, this is my addition. <laughs> But there's more, but there's more. Brothers and sisters, this morning, have you been water baptized? Praise the Lord. But there's more. But there's more. But there's more. And if it's for a murderer, it's for you. 
Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And they explain the way of God to him more accurately. Praise the Lord. That's Matthew. If you look in Mark, you know what it's recorded? Mark 1.8, I've baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Luke, so Matthew, Mark, Luke. John answered them, I baptize you with water, but the one who's coming is more powerful than I am. I can't even untie his sandal straps. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I, I'm, not, I'm not holding any secrets from you. I am praying for the Holy Spirit to baptize you with him. In the Holy Spirit, I'm praying to Jesus for him to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. And with fire. So, what happens next? A short time later. So, Apollos in Ephesus is about 25 years later. Um, and then we see what happens next. So the very next episode is Acts 19. So if you've got your Bibles, you can turn there, and here are the scriptures. So it's going to be 12 Ephesian believers. So Priscilla and Aquila uh, minister to Apollos. That's one man. That's one man. And then Paul ministers to a group again. Are you ready? Here we go, Acts 19. Uh, it is in about seven verses. Ready? So while Apollos was in Corinth... Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast where he found several believers. Ding, 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 ding. Here's the title of our message this morning, right? Verse 2. There's more than one way to say this, but this is one of the translations. Having believed, did you receive the Holy Spirit? He asked them. I have the Holy Spirit. I'm a Christian. Yes, you do. You would not be a Christian if the Holy Spirit did not live in you this morning. So, so we don't, let's be clear about that. If you're a Christian this morning, the only way, the only way you're a Christian is that when you said yes to God, the Holy Spirit came in and he brought you into the family of God. He made you, you were dead, you were dead, and he made you alive in Christ by coming into your life. And so you have the Holy Spirit in you. But now, Paul talks to verse 1. What's the last word in verse 1? No trick question. The last word of verse 1. What does it say? Believers. People who are Christians already. And his question. Why does he ask that question? There was something. Either the Holy Spirit showed him or he discerned something. And Paul's question... To, Paul's question is, hang on, Paul's question is, having believed, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Paul has no question. You're born again. Jesus lives in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. You have evidence of God's life in you. You have new life. You have passed from death to life. But after believing, did you receive the Holy Spirit. And that's your question this morning, brothers and sisters. That's my question this morning. That's our question. Now, Paul asks them, and I'm asking you, but that's a question for you to ask yourself and to be honest about in your answer. Having believed, or since you have believed, have you received the Holy Spirit? Two different things. Two different things. Have you received the Holy Spirit? Let's see what their answer is. And they say, no, they replied, we haven't even heard there is a Holy Spirit. And this kind of blows our mind. What do you mean they haven't heard there's a Holy Spirit? What does this mean? It doesn't mean, what? Holy Spirit? Of course they knew about the Holy Spirit from the Old Testament. Very clear. The Holy Spirit's in the Old Testament, right? The Spirit of God. Very, very clear. These were devout these were devout uh, believers, um, and they had, uh, we, don't, we don't know if, I don't, they probably were not Jewish. They were probably Greek, but they had to have known about the Holy Spirit. But what did they mean? We haven't even heard there's a Holy Spirit. They did not understand that the promise that Jesus had given 
Everyone, John 6 and 7, everyone that's thirsty on the last day, the great day of the feast, remember? Everyone, and he cried out with a loud voice, everyone that's thirsty, come to me and drink. And out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of the Holy Spirit. Whom, had, whom was later to be given. It had not yet come. The Bible's very clear about that. And they did not know that the promise of the Father and the baptism of the Holy Spirit was available through the power of Jesus Christ. And so Paul asks them further. He says, well, what baptism did you experience? The baptism of John, water baptism, repentance. And Paul says, John's baptism called for repentance from sin, but John himself told the people to believe in the one who had come later, meaning Jesus, Jesus. Now, what were they going to do with this? And my question to us this morning is, what are you going to do with this? I mean it. What are you going to do with this, brothers and sisters? First of all, if if you're not yet a Christian this morning... I want to tell you there's nothing better than having a life in God. There's nothing better. Do all your problems go away? Nope. (laughs) You're still going to have problems. But guess what? You're going to have the powerful, mighty God working with you and walking with you as you go through this life. And there's no other way to go through this life than in the help and the power and the presence and the companionship of God who is with you and who will never leave you nor forsake you, whose mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. There's no other way to go through this life. So if that's where you are this morning, this is a great chance for you today to say, yes, I want, to, I want to have a relationship with God. But if you have a relationship with God, here's the question for you. Since you have believed, have you received? Simple as that. What are, what are they going to do? What are you going to do? I am not interested in a history lesson this morning. I'm interested in us. What do they do? Well, here's a good example for us. As soon as they heard this, immediate obedience. They're not complacent. They don't say, well, I'll think about it. Well, yeah, if, if he wants me to, he can do this. Well, let me, let me read a little bit more. May I say to you this morning, if you've been listening this last couple months now, you have enough here to move forward as it comes into your heart. What does it say? As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they, in this case, it's interesting, they were water baptized again, right? So they were baptized in the name of Jesus, but that's not all. Then, when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. There were about 12 men in all. So they lacked in understanding, and Paul took care of that. They lacked in experience, and they immediately obeyed, and God answered. God answered. Since you have believed, have you received? Since you have believed, have you received? God help us. Since you have believed, have you received? I read you Matthew, Mark, Luke. Let's end with this this morning. Stephen, if you want to just come. And you can listen, you can close your eyes. I just want us to, it's 12.02, so we still got just a little bit of time. We've got some time. We have time for God, Yeah. We read Matthew, we read Mark, we read Luke. Look at what John records. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and he said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Verse 33, I didn't know he was the one. 
But when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And then look at John 1.26. I love this. I love this. John told them, I baptize with water, but someone stands among you whom you do not know. Brothers and sisters, you know him. You know him. Don't worry about distractions. It's okay. Let's keep our focus. John 1. John 1, 26. Someone stands among you whom you do not know. So right now, we're going to pray again, okay? If you are baptized with the Holy Spirit and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to ask you right now just to start praying. You don't have to sh shout and scream. Just start praying softly. Just start praying in the, whole, pr start praying in the Holy Spirit. Start praying in the Holy Spirit. I can't do anything. And you don't have to produce anything. Jesus is the one who does this. Since you have believed, have you received? The one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire stands among you this morning. We're just going to give him some time this morning. We're going to give him ourselves this morning. I'm going to pray for you, but you don't have to listen to me. You, you pray. You pray this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, you have told us by your word, and we sense in our spirits that you are standing among us. Now, right now, here with us. Would you baptize us with your Holy Spirit and with fire? I understand now that um, I don't have to produce something I understand that I can't make myself worthy. This is what you do. Would you baptize? Would you baptize with your Holy Spirit? Would you baptize me with your Holy Spirit? I don't want you, Jesus, to wait on me any longer. I don't want you to wait on me. I want to come to you in sincere heart, in sincere belief. Even though my faith is small, even though I, I don't know everything, even though I don't, I'm not sure, I come to you. Forgive me where I have been careless, casual, and complacent. I'm sorry about that. When you have your wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit for me. And so, Jesus, God, would you baptize me? I ask you. I ask you. I ask. I seek. I knock. And I hold on to your words from Luke 11. How much more will God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Hallelujah. just want to take a little bit of time. Just pray. Just pray. I, I invite you, I know you're praying inside right now, I invite you just to give voice, give words. You don't have to say it loudly, you can whisper, you can whisper, but just ask the Lord. Just, just ask the Lord and let him work in your heart this morning, in your life this morning. Mm -hmm. 
my heart I worship you give you praise you praise all that I adore is in you Lord I give you my heart Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way. So I'm going to ask you to keep your eyes closed, and I'm going to ask you again this morning what I asked last week at the end of the service. If you desire, if you want the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the, a further work of the Holy Spirit in your life, I'm going to invite you, raise your hand again. Raise your hand again. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I see it, but guess what? God sees it. That's more important. That's more important. Okay. Okay. You can put your hands down. I don't know why you wouldn't. <laughs> oh, that God would come. That God would come. So what we're going to do is this, this week. Tonight or today when you go home. You're going to give God some time, okay? Just talk with him. Don't worry about, is it going to be emotional? I, often, it is, often it is. It may not be. You don't have to produce anything. You give God some time. Just talk with him. You can read some of these verses. Your faith. You know why I keep on going over these verses? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word, our faith builds, our faith builds. My commitment to you is that I am praying for you and I'm not going to stop. I'm not. I am not going to. I know this is God's plan and desire for you. And so since I'm partnered with God and I'm your pastor, this is my prayer for you. This is my prayer for you. You give God some time every day, every day, and just see what he does. Just see what he does. God never lies. He always keeps his promises. And if you say, ah, oh, pastor, I, I was praying for you this morning. Okay, here's, the, and then we got to close. Sometimes we know it up here but our hearts are far from it, right? Our desire's far from it. Yeah, I know, I know, but my heart's here. Guess what? I am the same way. I'm the same way. I know it's here, but my heart and my, des my desire are here. May I give you a prayer to pray that God will answer? God, I know that this is, but God, I'm down here and my heart's whatever. Lord, would you change my heart and get me to get me to there? And he always does. Give him time to do it. If you say, now, Lord, 
Keep praying it till God gets your heart and your desire up to him. And he will. And then he'll answer. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I am praying for you. You can call me anytime. Don't call me after midnight. I'm praying for you this week. And when God, the Holy Spirit, starts moving and working, I want to hear about it. I want to know. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're so welcome, my dear Ampi. God bless you. I love you. Have a great week. We got.